So uh, until I get a fix on the habit of posting things daily, I guess um, I'll sort of resort to using the morning as a really good time to post these videos. Um, so the topic I want to talk about today uh, is something that is uh, pr probably one of my most important topics, um, which is uh, basically having a selective focus only to look at a certain uh, level, you could say, of opportunities. Um, what I mean by that is, you know, obviously opportunities exist everywhere. Uh, we could talk about good opportunities or we could talk about bad opportunities. Um, meaning, um, at any moment, I have the opportunity, let's say I'm looking for opportunities uh, to kill myself, um, I, I can instantly find in the environment ways to make that happen, like say jumping in the upcom upcoming traffic. Now let's say I change my focus, uh, this is called by the way the RAS, RAS stands for reticular activation system. It's basically your um, selective focus where your brain kind of uh, kind of weeds out things that in the environment because there's just too much shit to focus on. So imagine you ask yourself, um, what can I do right now? Like let's say even as a daily habit, what can I do right now that would be like a positive thing that would, you know, I could help somebody. Now you're going to start seeing the environment, you're going to start looking at opportunities to actually help people. So you're going to see things you've previously never noticed. Or let's say you ask, what's nice about today? Again, you're going to find opportunities that you weren't quite um, aware of. Now, this also applies to goal setting. You could even say it especially applies to goal setting in the sense that most people, when they set their goals, the biggest mistake they make is setting goals too low. Like, for example, you go to the gym, your goal is like, hey, I'm going to get a bit more fit or I want to lose a bit of weight. Problem with these kinds of small goals is that they don't give you the right sufficient motivation to actually push through and on one hand persist, on the other hand generate enough action to actually see results. Um, so whenever I have a target, let's say in uh, working out, I set really massive goals, like let's say uh, my deadlift exercise. Um, I'm currently bench press uh, deadlifting about um, 100 kilos. So what I do, I set my goal at 150. So it's like a big, big leap. Now what happens straight away, you're still thinking in leaps. So I'm like, okay, how can I progress as fast as possible? And your brain starts thinking about the possibility of doing like 150 kilos and it's like, whoa, that's like a shitload of weight. That's so cool. Like, I wonder how, how amazing my body will look when I can lift like 50% more weight than I can currently do at max rep. Um, so the same thing also applies to your income. Now, this is something that people get so wrong. Like, they, th that's like the biggest problem in my opinion regarding income and goal setting is that what do you do in income In income it's easier because it's numbers basically you know money is always it's numbers so it's the only thing you can actually measure all the time so when you look for opportunities whether it be a job opportunity or even a, an investment opportunity or a business opportunity you you have a certain comfort level you have a certain level where you're like okay that's just my area of opportunities um, like let's say in a really good time I might be looking at opportunities where I go up to a CEO I'm like okay let's say let's see how can I help this guy make an additional hundred thousand dollars a month so I'm thinking in these terms uh, in bad times I, you you might you know especially when you're kind of working for yourself you might even degenerate and start taking opportunities that are like way way smaller than what you usually take because your tolerance for basically your, your you could say your magnitude or your range of, of opportunities got a lot wider in the bad sense so 
Warren Buffett, what he says, which I really like, is that successful people, the only difference between successful people and super successful people is that super successful people basically say no to almost everything. Meaning um, you have to learn how to kind of really, really allocate your time, but also your opportunities. So when you're facing, let's say, an opportunity for a client or a job, you really want to ask yourself, do I actually, am I actually fulfilling my potential right now? Because whenever you pick something, let's say a certain job or um, anything of that sort, sorry, some guys uh, just don't know when to stop their car when they're crossing the street. Anyway, um, when you pick opportunities, you do realize that every single opportunity you choose is actually like time invested where you could have done something else. Also, there's the force of, you could call it like stagnation where whatever opportunity you pick, you're gonna sort of tend to stay at that level. Um, meaning, let's say you get a job that gives you $6,000 a month, you kind of tend to stay at that level, that range for quite a long time, unless you get dissatisfied or you see a really big opportunity. Um, what always scares me is not aiming high enough and actually hitting the target and then being dissatisfied. Um, this happened to me the first time when I actually got to what I considered at the time massive success, started making between 10 to $15,000 a month just from online, uh, coaching people, um, I would work maybe 10 to 20 hours a week. Super fun, super easy, but I got bored. <laughs> you know, I got really, really depressed, which is funny, right? Like you make 10, 15, $20,000 a month. You barely work. You do something that you actually really like and you're depressed. <laughs> so that's what happened to me. So I kind of quit that business started aiming higher, I hit my target again, got depressed again. So what that sort of made me realize is that when you don't ha aim high enough and you hit the target, it actually sucks. Like you actually feel really, really bad, like even worse than before, because before you actually had the motivation. Now, because you're like a lot closer to being satisfied, but you're not satisfied. It's like, it's even worse. <laughs> um, so for me, I have this, you could call it like a hack or like this realization of um, infinity. Like what I mean by that is I realized at some point, I just realized it that because I've done, I had so many businesses, I've done so many different things. I've destroyed so many businesses on purpose to try again, try again, try again. And every time I did it, aiming higher, doing something different. Where it's got to the point that I realized that, let's say you're under financial stress, you need to get money fast, like you're in debt or certain obligations. It would almost be preferable to skip those obligations, as much as it sounds irresponsible, it would almost be preferable, it would actually be preferable to skip those obligations, not fall onto the pressure and go for something that's below your potential. So you would almost rather, let's say you have like a credit card bill next week or debts, whatever it is, You'd almost rather not go for the low hanging fruit that would help you kind of move a bit towards the closing the debt or, you know, um, getting to that goal. You would almost rather miss it for the sake of aiming higher to something that if you achieve it would actually like 10 X, whatever it is you owe. So let's say you owe $3,000 and you need to close that by two weeks, 
what's going to tend to happen, even if you were in the $10,000 income bracket, suddenly you're thinking low because you're like, okay, I just got to close it. I just got to take care of that. But the way life works is that you close one thing, another thing opens. <laughs> like you, you know, you get out of debt, you get back in, back into debt. It's a never ending cycle. I know because I've been there. <laughs> so the only way out of your problems, it isn't to solve one problem. It's to basically solve the root cause of the problem. Now in money, the root cause of the problem is always, always income. You know, you can say, oh, it's my debt. I'm wasting too much money. I'm spending too much and doing this and doing this. It's never about that. Like that's like five, 10%. It's 90, 95% income. Are you putting in enough money? You can solve every problem with income. So let's say most of your debt problems are in the 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 10,000 range. If you get your income to 20,000 a month, you basically not only solved the problem in this instance, you actually solved the problem in general <laughs> because, because now income, you know, debt problems in the range of one to $10,000 are you, no longer problems, they're just expenses. So debt is created whenever you don't have enough income to take care of that expense. So the answer is always not to try to hack away at the debt slowly, of course, unless it's massive, massive debt, but you know, I'm not talking about super massive debts, but I, although even though in these situations, it's also an opportunity to maybe 100x your income if you're up for it. So you wanna go to a higher level of focus basically um, so just to wrap up let's say you're fat you just had a heart attack or your doctor just told you dude you're gonna have a heart attack your goal again this is time sensitive you need to take care of it you need to have a goal that is not playing defense not coming from scarcity but coming from abundance meaning not I need to lose weight quickly or else I'll get a heart attack but aim 10 times higher than that like I want to be super fit let's say you have debts in the $2,000 range you don't set your goals like okay I need to close the 2000 quickly so how do I get $2,000 you want to ask how do I start making 20,000 so that the goal that that problem is no longer a problem because again realize that life is cyclical life repeats itself and whatever problem you don't face at the root level it just come back so always 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 attack at the root problem and make sure you put your selective focus when setting goals at the next level where that problem no longer exists. So I hope this has been informative. As usual, feel free to ask questions, contact me, and uh, thanks for listening. See you soon.